Hello, welcome back um, to the next in our, our series of introductory video tutorials for the IDF to PH toolkit. Uh, I'm Ed May with Building Type, glad to have you back. Um, I think we're going to finish up our vent discussion of ventilation here with uh, 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 by addressing the question of the envelope air tightness. Um, it's an important piece of the overall airflow question of our buildings and um, we, we need some method of managing it and setting the setting the data for that. That's going to drive a big chunk of both our heating and cooling uh, uh, performance, uh, as well as the obviously the comfort durability of the building. It's going to be important. And when it comes to passive house buildings, we're going to be shooting for a very high level of air tightness. So we definitely want a, an, an ability to set that value somehow. So before we take jump into our, our grasshopper and our rhino scene, our energy plus scene, let's take a look at the PHPP and let's just remember what it is that we're trying to set here. So I'm on the verification worksheet of my um, of my my PHPP. Hopefully you're you're in the same place where your PHPP is talking nicely to your grasshopper and your rhino scene. So all your data and information are streaming out from that program into this PHPP. And um, there's a there's a value here that we we have been ignoring up till now, and, and we want to turn our attention to it. We want to start to set it. So notice here on row 43, one of the verification items for passive certification is the air tightness of the building, and we are currently inputting a value of 3.8 air changes per hour when tested at 50 pascals of pressure. So that's quite a bit higher than the reference target for new construction of 0.6. As a result, we are not complying. Um, and so we're at, we are supposed to be at 0.6. We are currently at 3.8. Um, how? Why? Where did 3.8 come from? That's a very specific number. Where did that come from? How did that get calculated? Well, let's remember where the air tightness gets input for our PHPP. So if I scroll over to the ventilation worksheet, not the additional ventilation, just the standard ventilation worksheet. And to zoom in a little bit here, so we can see a little more carefully. On row 27, the air change rate at pressure, so at 50 pascals, has to be input by the user as a value. And you can see here the value is being input as 3.77. And notice it has that blue styling, which means that it's streaming through from the IDF file, from the Energy Plus file. So this is getting read and interpreted from the Energy Plus file. So let's take a look at the IDF. And let's see if we can't figure out where this value comes from, how, how this value is getting determined. So let me bring this back down. Let me open up my file viewer here. Yes, yes, yes. My file viewer here. And let's go to C, IDF to PH example, Energy Plus, Open Studio, Energy Plus, Models IDF, and here's our IDF file. Remember, our IDF file is the the blueprint or the instructions uh, for how to for how Energy Plus should run the simulation. We're not running our simulations. We are just looking at the blueprints and we're pulling data out of the blueprints here. So let's take a closer look. Where here are we going to set this air infiltration rate? Where do we set the infiltration rate? Well, I have a zone infiltration design flow rate right here. So let's look for 3.77 ACH. Uh, I don't have it. Instead, what I have is this airflow per exterior surface area, cubic meters per second per square meter. And it's this weird little tiny number. I also have a design flow rate calculation method. And I have a schedule. So this is very different than the PHPP. This is a very different input unit. Not very different, but a different input unit. But the notion that we would use a schedule to calculate the infiltration error exchange this is very, very different than the PHPP. So just to flag that right up front, the Energy Plus and the PHPP are going to approach the question of building air tightness quite differently. As we saw with the uh, ventilation airflow, the PHPP is going to uh, try and calculate a constant air exchange, which is which it's going to apply for in the entire season. So it does it seasonally. It looks at both the winter season and the summer season. So it's going to calculate a, a essentially an average um, uh, air infiltration flow rate for the season, and it's going to apply it uniformly across the entire season. 
Now, Energy Plus is working quite differently. Um, it's going to use the schedule right here, and it's going to use this formula by default. It's going to use this guy right here. It's going to take into account the wind speed uh, and the operation, here, our, the operation of our uh, mechanical system. Um, the assumption there being that when the system is on, I think I think that the building is slightly pressurized, and so you have a different air leakage rate through the through the um, the envelope. And when the when the ventilation system is off overnight or on the weekends, if it's an office, you would then have a different airflow rate because the the pressure differential would be quite different. Um, so you know this is a very different way of approaching the question of air infiltration, and it's going to yield a very different result, a very different answer. We can we can. Um, we can do the math. I mean, the math is not too complicated. And in fact, we do do the math. And if you do the math using this number and this schedule and some of the other things for this building, what you end up with is a air change rate of 3.77. So if you were to sort of work backwards and take all the schedules into account, et cetera, et cetera, you, you could come up with a constant flow rate or an average flow rate of 3.77. For, for this building, based on the uh, the input net there. Now, where does all this information come from? Well, it, remember, it thinks that it's an office, so it's looking at the it's looking at the default program, and, and this number here is just based on a sort of default for um, you know office type projects. So this is all based on some sort of library of of information that that we have. So for our project, we want to override all of this, and we want to set our our value much more carefully. And if we want to get alignment between the Energy Plus and the PHPP, again, if we're trying to sort of um, get a mirror version of the model, if we want to get a sort of uniform version of the model, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to simplify the Energy Plus, and we're going to have to override this variation in uh, leakage. We're going to apply a constant schedule to the whole season um, to, in, in order for the Energy Plus model to, to um, more accurate, not, well, yeah, to more closely match the PHPP results. So if we're trying to get alignment in results from the two modeling um, programs, um, we can we can override these uh, these variable values. Now, now maybe you don't want to. Maybe you want the energy plus to be the energy plus and the PHPP to be the PHPP, and that's fine. Um, but you know we're going to just show the method here. You can choose to use it or or not. So we need a whole new section in our definition here. We have created our, our geometry. We've added windows. We've calculated window shading factors. We've built out our rooms. And we've established the ventilation flow rates. We've built our fresh air ventilation system. So somewhere in here, we actually have to, uh, we're going to have to set our air exchange rate. So we're going to have to add some more components to the definition here. We're going to need a new section. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it. Um, where am I going to put it? Let's put it. Um, let's put it over. Let's put it. Let's put it way up here. Let's put it up here with the envelope. This is all the envelope of our building. And so the air, to, to my mind, the air, the air tightness is sort of envelope related. So I'm actually going to put it up here with the envelope elements of, the, of our project. So I'm going to make myself some room here. And um, we'll uh, calculate or we'll set the air tightness of the envelope up here with the rest of the envelope, the rest of the envelope elements. I could put it virtually anywhere in this chain. It all flows into the energy plus eventually, um, but um, just, you know, Logically, to my mind, it makes sense here. So let's say set uh, envelope. So this is just the envelope air tightness. We've already set all the airflow rates from the mechanical ventilation system, so we don't want to worry about that. This is just for the, the envelope. So we'll set the envelope air tightness here. How are we going to do that? What, what components are we going to use to set the envelope air tightness? Well, if we come up to our building type rollout here to the O1 model, we uh, have an air tightness component here. So there's a new component um, uh, along with the other sort of ventilation flow rate elements here, which is a building type air tightness component or yeah, uh, uh, an air tightness component here. This is another pass through. So we're going to take in honeybee zones and kick out honeybee zones after they've been modified. So let's just get that working. So I'm going to take in honeybee zones. Notice that it's going to kind of freak out here a little bit. Um, it wants some information. So until we give it some information, it's going to be kind of unhappy. So we need to provide some values. We need to provide both the um, air exchange 
and the, um, the pressure that the air exchange was tested at. So let's go ahead and um, we'll say we're going to do all of our tests at 50 pascals. So we'll say 50, this will be um, pascals of pressure. And then we need to give it an actual value. What is the tested air change of our building? Let's say for a passive house new construction building. So this is ACH, air changes per hour. It would be 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 uh, ACH there. And we're still having a problem. What is your problem? What are you looking for? Oh, right. I totally forgot. Uh, my mistake. I made a mistake. This cannot go here. This needs to go later. Uh, for this component to work properly, we need a volume. We need to know the volume of the space for this to actually work properly. So this has to come after we build our rooms. I apologize, I got that all mixed up there. So let me let me move some of this around. I forgot, this cannot go early on. This has to go later because it needs to know the volume of the space. So whoops, let me, uh, let me adjust that. That's right. Da, 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 da. There we go. So let's see if it is happier when I pass this. In. There we go. Right. So we we were trying to use this too early on. That's my my mistake. My apologies. We needed to have a volume for the space. And remember, we don't. Whoops. We don't. Stop it. We don't establish the volume of the space until we build the rooms. So until we build these rooms, we can't actually calculate the the air exchange of the space. So till, till there's a volume, there's nothing for it to calculate. So we have to do this later on. So fine, we'll do it over here. And let me pass the honeybee zones as output. So I'm gonna take, my definition's getting a little bit long and unwieldy here, but uh, take this guy and put this over here. There we go. And there we are. So let's take a look at our, um, let's take a look at our PHPP and notice nothing has happened just yet. So why has this not changed? So nothing here has changed. Well, we have set this value, but let's go to our let's go back to our energy plus, and we'll go find this guy, and let's go back to our da, 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 zone infiltration design flow rate. Yeah, this has not changed. Nothing here has changed. The schedule hasn't changed. The load hasn't changed, and that's true. So this component does not actually change any of those schedules. All it does is calculate the information for us. We need to then pass this information to the native Honeybee tools. So the same way that we set the zone schedules and loads in our ventilation components, we do the same thing here with our air tightness. I'm going to come up to Honeybee. I'm going to go to 08. I'm going to say set the zone loads. And instead of setting the ventilation loads this time, now what I'm going to set is the infiltration rate per area of facade. So infiltration rate per area of facade. I'm going to take this. I'm going to connect that guy there. I'll take HB zone and connect that to HB zone. And there we go. So now when we go back to our PHPP, notice we are at 0 0.6 air changes per hour. So we've reset the loads here. We've reset the loads. If I go back to my energy plus, go back to my IDF document, and go to my editor, and go down and find my, what are we looking for? Zone infiltration design flow rate. So this number is now quite different. This number has been reset based on the, the air tightness calculator. So our 0 0.6 ACH is flowing through properly. Notice we get 0 0.6 here now. I go back to my verification worksheet. This is now coming in at 0 0.6. So this is certification compliant now. So this, this is a good valid number for new construction for a, a pass file style project. Now, one thing that has not been reset here, though, is the schedule. So notice that the schedule is still using the office schedule. And so this function is still going to be operational in the Energy Plus by default. So we need to turn this off. We need to turn this off. We need to reset this to a constant schedule 
if we want the energy plus model to match the PHPP. So if we want the two models to match one another, and again, we don't have to, but if we want them to, we do need to reset our schedules. Let me clean up a little bit here and let me add another component to the, the panel. Um, we're going to set the zone schedules. So here I'm going to take my honeybee zones, I'm going to input those here. And what I want to do is reset the infiltration schedule. So I want to reset the infiltration schedule and I want to reset it with a constant schedule. So I go up to 07 schedules, I'm going to pull down my constant schedule here. And just like before, we need to give a value and a name. So I'm going to, I'm going to reset it so that it's working um, at 100%. So it's just a constant, always on um, uh, infiltration rate. And I'll give it a name. I'm going to call this PHPP style constant infiltration. Give that the name. Notice this guy works now. And I'll take the schedule and I'll pass it into the infiltration schedules value here. Now, nothing changed in our PHPP, but if we go back to our Energy Plus model, So we take a look at our energy. Oh wait, my, my mistake. We didn't. We're not quite ready yet. We need to. We need to pass along the modified honeybee zone. I forgot we have to pass this along. So I take my modified honeybee zone with the new schedule. I pass that to the next node in the sort of chain here. Now I can go back to my energy plus and let me take a look now. We'll filter using Control L. Come down here to my. Design specification outdoor air, and notice now our outdoor air schedule name is the PHPP ventilation constant schedule. So this is a constant always on schedule. So we're always going to have this amount of air leakage at a constant rate all season long. And that's going to enable us to match more closely the way that the PHPP is doing the calculation. Now, whether that's accurate to the real world or not is a whole separate question. That's, uh, I'll leave that up to you. Um, but what this will allow us to do is at least get the math to work correctly so that our two models will be in alignment with one another. I should note, there's all sorts of other methods for calculating um, infiltration rates, especially when you get into big buildings. It's a kind of a fascinating little uh, subject. So, you know, there's plenty of plenty of research out there. There's plenty of other methods that you can take a look at, go down that rabbit hole someday. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to use a nice simplified technique. We're going to use a constant always on schedule. We use a constant flow rate. That's going to, so our energy plus simulation, if we chose to go do our energy plus simulation, is going to match our PHPP almost exactly. So hopefully that makes sense. We uh, have done a lot here in our ventilation section. So we have um, fleshed out our discussion of the uh, ventilation flow rates when it comes to rooms. We've you know reset or we've set all of our, our, um, our flow rates and our schedules, our operation schedules when, when it comes to our rooms. We've uh, obviously just now set all of our, our envelope air tightness when it comes to the schedules and the, the rates of air infiltration, air leakage. And we've built out a fresh air ventilation system, and we've modified the parameters, and we've set it up as we like. And all of that is flowing through into both our Energy Plus model and our PHPP model at the same time. So we're getting good live results here in our PHPP model. And whenever we like, we could go off and execute our simulation using our Energy Plus model, and we would get pretty, pretty, um, pretty uh, uh, comparable results. Now there are still some other systems that we want to build out in the future, so uh, we'll come back and do some future videos uh, at some point of um, things like uh, domestic hot water schedules. We will um, you know, we'll look at heating and cooling systems as well. This is obviously just for the, the uh, ventilation, the outdoor airflow, but um, you know we're, 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 we're pretty well along here. We've got an awful lot of information streaming uh, uh, from our, our Rhino document through our Grasshopper into our Energy Plus and into our, our um, our PHPP. So again, hopefully your hopefully your your setup is all working, and hopefully you're getting kind of similar-ish results. I mean, if your results are a little different, it's probably because you you drew a slightly different building or, or something of the like. You have slightly different parameters somewhere, but hopefully you're getting something like the the values that we that we see here. So. Um, um, 
So I hope that is helpful. I hope that I hope that makes sense, and I will um, very much look forward to seeing everybody back in in future um, future future series. Um, as I said, we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll pick this up and we'll we'll keep going with um, with some more videos in the future. So um, I will uh, look forward to seeing everyone then. All right, thanks very much.